Hello and welcome to this episode of the Guides with Glasses podcast. I am Ben Dito John and I have with me No Name Josh. Hey buddy. How's it going man? It's going good. So uh, you have some announcements about the site. Why don't you tell us about them? All right. So right now we have the Batman Arkham Origins review up on the site. Uh, a Backyard Battles preview. It's a new iOS Android game. Tons of fun. Uh, that's a preview that's up. Um, I'm going to be putting out an article about misogyny in gaming. Uh, that should be up by the time this airs, but uh, just take a... Or, well, I guess just pay attention to it, or for it. Interesting. That's about it. Josh's opinions. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Yeah, you can hate me or love me for it, whatever. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, this is also a big week in gaming, isn't it, man? Yeah. Uh, we got the PlayStation 4 coming out in just a few hours. So by the time this airs, it'll have already been out. Yeah. Um, what's your thoughts? I mean, what's, are you excited about the PS4 launch? Are you going to wait? Are you going to get it? What are you going to do? Uh, I would, I would love to get it, but I do not have the money to spend on the PS4 and the Xbox One. So, um, I'm sticking with the Xbox One because all my friends are on there and, you know, all my Xbox Live stuff is there, so sadly, PS4 you know, has not drawn me with their kill zone over to their side. Yeah, you know, that's that's interesting that you bring that up. I mean, it's kind of like you're in the Xbox camp or you're in the PlayStation camp, you know, and a lot of people go with what their friends are on. You know, it's funny, I was watching uh, I was watching South Park. Man, they still make great episodes. And, uh, <laughs> I know, right? They had... Um, they have i think it's gonna be multiple episodes and it's about the console wars and they and it's kind of interesting because it's like game of thrones references where like people get split up in the ps4 the xbox camp (laughs) and uh they're trying to get one for cheap on black friday it was actually an amazing episode but it's funny because yeah it basically like people are like oh i like the ps4 feature so i'm going to be switching over to ps4 but then like you have some of your friends on xbox and um yeah how are they gonna uh you know how are you going to handle that? Like, if a bunch of your friends go to PlayStation, would you go to PlayStation, Josh? Uh, yeah. I probably would, to be honest. Because I play mostly online to chat with my brothers and friends that have moved far away. So, yeah, th- that's what I mostly use it for. Other than that, a lot of the games are cross-platform, so it wouldn't be a huge, devastating blow to me. I'm not, like, attached to Halo or Gears of War or stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I mean, in my boat, I'm going to be getting an Xbox One, but I am eager to try out the PlayStation 4. I do want to get one, but I kind of want to wait until that big exclusive comes out. Killzone, just, I'm not that excited about it, but maybe once, uh, you know, a, a, like a God of War title or something, if or, uh, you know, something new in the, um, uh, like like The Last of Us from Naughty Dog. Yeah. Once one of yeah. those titles come out, like, yeah, it's, uh, it's over. I'm totally going to get as one. As soon as but, the um, new Naughty Dog title comes out, I'll probably end up buying a PS4. But I'm just being honest with myself. Yeah. That's the entire reason I bought my PS3 was because of Uncharted. So, I mean, I can't see it yeah, going any other yeah. way. Yeah, so, I mean, they definitely have some good exclusives. And, I mean, Sony also has um, some really kind of artsy, some really weird, uh, like, downloadable titles too on their playstation network yeah. and i really like that too so like some of those you know in the ps3 generation were just awesome and they were just i don't think they were really like system sellers it's not really worth getting a system for but they were just amazing like um like journey for example it was just awesome you know if you have a ps3 it's totally worth the 10 bucks for that um and i'm kind of eager to see you know like what kind of risks you know and what kind of what kind of cool titles come out over the coming years yeah yeah I agree. Well, it's, it's funny be because yeah. I say, well, Killzone isn't really drawing me to it, but nothing on the Xbox One exclusive-wise is really drawing me to it. Rise was okay at PAX. Yeah. Killer Instinct, I'm not a fighter player. And Dead Rising 3, I've never really gotten into any of those games, so it's just... Yeah. It's literally yeah. just the friends that that uh, are sticking with it that makes me want to go Xbox One. Are you excited about the TV features that are coming out? You know, the fast app switching, you know, and being able to watch live TV on your Xbox? Okay, I think that is cool. Uh, I was wondering, uh, you know, if you were going to ask about that because I wanted to talk about it. I think it's cool that you can split live TV with a video game. And I think one of the... That is cool. One of the cooler commercials that they've come out with is uh, the one with uh, Brian Erlacher and uh, Ray Lewis, like, talking about... 
their retirement. The, the football yeah, one? Yeah, the football one. And I just think it's funny because, uh, I don't know, I just see Ray Lewis doing that on Sundays, like, you know, drawing up his face <laughs> well, and putting on his, his football gear. I don't know. It's just funny. <laughs> you know, it's cool because, um, yeah, I mean, they showed off some, like, demo reels of it, you know, of the actual console fast app switching, and it's actually really speedy. Yeah. You know, and I think um, if that works how they say it does, I think that could be a really cool feature. I mean, yeah, you know, there's a lot of people that are going to, uh, you know, watching shows on Netflix and everything. But I think there's still a large audience that still does watch stuff on TV, and I'm one of them, you know. And so having kind of a, a game console that can also do great TV features, I mean, that's an additional selling feature that I'm interested in. Well, you know... I like live TV because there's always going to be that one a-hole friend you have that watches TV week to week and spoils everything for you. So I try to like avoid <laughs> that by watching cable TV. I'm not that friend, am I? I just want to make sure. I'm not that guy. No, 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 no. Hopefully. Well, I mean, your wife might be a little bit with the whole Game of Thrones At the end of Lost, this happens? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know what you're saying. The one thing I am yeah. excited for on the Xbox One, Forza 5. I had so much fun with Forza 4. It was me and Nick and another friend of ours that uh, that played the crap out yeah. of Forza 4. You know what I like about the Forza series is that it's a racing game for people that are both hardcore enthusiasts of the racing genre and for people that kind of like that arcade kind of play. Yeah. And for, for me, I've always liked the, like, the Burnout series and stuff. I'm not really a huge fan of racing games, especially like Gran Turismo. But I do like kind of that arcadey stuff, and the thing is that that has like arcadey kind of play, but then you get the awesome cars and you can go in depth if you want to. So yeah, I think the Forza series is actually great. It's it's really fun. Yeah, well, the Forza series, what I think is cool about it is it is realistic if you want it to be, or you can dumb it down. I, I think having that slider of like arcadey to realistic is a really good idea and i feel like gran turismo kind of misses that mark like i feel like it's four hardcore racers not so much like that sliding scale yeah it's you know it's for the enthusiasts you know they call them like the racing simulator they don't even call it like the racing game you know and it's like those type of games i mean the enthusiasts you know they're buying the racing wheels you know they're getting the seats and they're getting like three consoles set up because they're running it on three monitors and it's just i mean that ain't me, and there's a niche for that, but, you know, those people are, you know, real enthusiasts, mm -hmm. and um, I'm glad there's a game for them, you know, it's kind of like Flight Simulator, you know, there's people that do crazy, amazing things with, like, making their own cockpits and stuff, but, um, yeah, you know, like, I, yeah, I agree, like, those titles just, they don't really appeal to me. Yeah, yeah. Like, I like more of the, just the fun stuff. Oh, man. Yeah. So, what That's have you hardcore. been playing this week? I know we got way off track on that tangent, but what have you been playing this week? Yeah, so, um, I've actually been addicted to a few iPhone games, and, <laughs> uh, because I also told you last week that I got an, uh, an iPhone, and one of them is called Quiz Up, and, uh, you know, this is kind of an interesting point that I wanted to bring up to you, is, uh, Quiz Up is free, and it's a quiz game, and, you know, there's a, quiz games are a dime a dozen, but what's cool about this one is that it's actually really well polished. It um, You press play and then it, it pairs you up with someone and you're playing with people from all around the world, which is really cool. That's cool. And you only play with them for one round. And you can continue playing with them or you can choose someone else. And um, what's also neat is that, you know, for a lot of quiz games, uh, you know, you run out of questions and then it's not fun anymore. Or you have to wait for an update to the app or to the, to the game. In this game... Uh, all the quiz questions come from users and so they go to a website and they can submit and then they get added to the game. So the database of quiz questions is huge and they actually have hundreds of different genres. They have everything from like math and English, you know, trivia questions all the way to like video game questions, Game of Thrones categories and everything. So it's like you can find the categories that you're passionate about and then you can play against other people in them, which is actually really fun. So it's the Wikipedia of trivia games. <laughs> maybe maybe i mean it's kind of sad but like i love those games where it's like guess the logo you know with, like the words been removed it's it's sad but i'm pretty damn good at those <laughs> and so uh like i like to play that one and i like to play like the video game one you know and then there's i mean it's like yeah if you're a huge fan of like big bang theory and you know everything about that show there's a trivia category for that so i think it's kind of cool that it's like one game that appeals to everyone 
And here's 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 what's kind of crazy about it. So it's free. It's a super well polished game, and there's no ads. That's weird. It. I know, especially for a top of line iPhone game. How it makes its money is under a very subtle menu. They showcase um, that you can get a little bit faster EXP if you pay a dollar. Totally optional. It's not in your face. Um, EXP is not really necessary to enjoy the game. You know, it just makes you level up a little bit faster. And I'm like, this is how iPhone games should be. You know, something that's good and fun and um, doesn't rub it in your face. Yeah. I hate microtransaction stuff that just pops up constantly. Every time you like, oh yeah! Every time you blink, there's a new pop up that's like, "Hey, you could buy this and be awesome." Uh. Yeah, like um, I was playing like a Sonic game that's a, like a clone of Temple Run, and the Sonic game's actually really good on iPhone, but they have ads constantly. Like as soon as you're done with the level, they have video ads, and you can't <laughs> skip them. You have to wait oh, five to ten precious. seconds. It's just like YouTube. It's so annoying. I'm like, I really hope this is just kind of a fad and they don't go with um, continuing down this path of having video ads. It's so annoying. Yeah. Well, so. what I think is cool, uh, I, I was playing uh, Max Axe for, well, I'm still playing it, but uh, what's interesting about it is is you can choose to watch the videos in a menu to get, like, a resurrection token or you know, a certain amount of gold, it's not, like, thrown in your face, like, hey, here's a video ad, and here's a, you know, here, buy this. It's, like you said, in a subtle menu that you don't have to... Oh, okay, so that's good. So, like, you can continue playing the game, and then you look at a little ad, basically, to continue playing? Yeah, well, so when you die in the middle of, like, the level, you can use a resurrection token to, to continue on, but... If you don't have them, it sucks, and they're hard to come by, so it's cool that they let you watch a video. Uh, it's a 15-second video for another game, and it gives you a res token. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's kind of like Candy Crush, where, um, you know, like, once you get farther along, you know, the game gets really challenging, and you only have a certain number of lives, and you have to wait X number of days um, of real time in order to play it again, or you can pay a dollar to play it faster, and... I think that's kind of interesting. It's like that might seem counterintuitive that you have to pay to to even just play it, you know. But the thing is that like it's kind of a hook. Like you don't realize that until you get kind of deep into the game and you're like, oh, this is fun. And it's like, oh, I just have to watch this ad or oh, I just have to pay a dollar instead of having to wait, you know, X number of time, you know, hours or days. So, um, yeah, yeah, I think that's kind of a creative way of of doing it. I don't know if I fully like it. I think the ads are better than pain. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> That's uh, yeah. very true to me. I, ugh. So, what have you been playing this past week? Okay, I have like sadly played very little of anything, but um, I got into a beta for Backyard Battles, which is the new iOS Android game that I spoke about in the beginning. And uh, you can uh, sadly you can only play it on the computer right now. I, I you can't download it for. Uh, for your portable device but uh anyway Mm -hmm. super fun and you can just click on like smart match and right now you mostly play against the people who made the game it's pretty cool i don't i don't know how else to explain it it's awesome that your little kids battling each other in like a tactics kind of game it's turn-based so is it like a it's so it's a real time strategy game like do you have like classes and weapons and stuff? Um, what you got is like a kid will be, his name will be lightweight and he's like dressed up in a boxing outfit, you know, with boxing gloves and all that stuff. Or you'll have like the fairy and it'll be like a little girl dressed up like a fairy, you know, a cartoon version of it. And they all have like different skills. Like one might have hyper, which he can attack twice in one turn, or magic. So whenever you put out another magic person, they get more life and more damage. It's, I don't know, it's pretty cool. And then there's kind of like, reminds me of like, uh, oh what? You know, like, uh, I like those kind of games. Was basically they're kind of like introductory games, I guess, to that genre. You know, but the thing is that with less character classes, not like a Final Fantasy Tactics with like 50 different classes. You know, like instead they they try to really focus on the fun aspect or try to make it really well balanced. You know, in order to make a successful game well that's really what they do and i think what some of the fun stuff that you can do you can put like uh you can give a guy a super soaker and he gets like a bonus two damage you know or 
a garbage can lid and he gets you know an extra health it it's just funny like i, I love those t types of games where it's just kind of like it's good clean fun is what i'll say it's just it's just great all yeah. around you know oh nice so uh so when's this supposed to be coming out Oh, uh, so sometime either around the end of this year or the beginning of next year. They don't have a a, a date for the. Uh... All right, well, I'll keep but if you go to YouTube and you look up uh, Next Gen Nerds, you can look up the uh, preview and it'll show you how to get into the beta. Oh, awesome! Okay, I'll have to check that out. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Um, so changing the topic a little bit, uh, we don't usually talk about gadgets, but uh, I'm a gadget freak. Josh, I know you love your gadgets too. In fact. <laughs> You just won a new gadget, didn't yes, you? Yes, I did. I freaking won a Surface with a uh, Blade edition. It's pretty sweet. I'm excited How for it. How did that happen? I How did you win that? I don't know. Out of all the people, uh, maybe it's just like my competitions where nobody freaking enters, and that's how this happened. Because all I did was tweet yeah, yeah. Surface and then uh, retweet their Im initial thing, and boom, I won. It's crazy. But I'm excited. That's awesome, man. I'm getting a new Surface in a week so um there's actually a cool new gadget that just got announced today that i'm um i'm interested in getting <laughs> and i want to get your thoughts on this you know what is uh you know is this kind of the future of of buying stuff um so you know how uh everyone pays with credit cards today yep and uh there's been talks for a number of years that payments will start using your phone so if your phone has um nfc which is kind of like this really close bluetooth wireless stuff um, you can tap your phone against a little pad, and you can pay with your phone on stuff. That was kind of this pipe dream that has been in the works for a number of years, but nothing's really hit. It hasn't really been proven to be really popular. Um, well, there's this cool new gadget that's come out that's kind of a mix between both worlds. It's a credit card, um, and it costs 50 bucks right now. And it has it's really thin. It's about the size of a credit card, and um, it has a little screen on it. And you, using your smartphone, you take a picture of your credit cards, it then adds them to the app, and then the app sends all your credit cards to this one special little hardware card. And now that hardware card, you can use it and you can swipe it at all the restaurants and the, um, and the, like the grocery stores and everything, just like any other card. And what's cool about this is that Rather than having a bunch of cards, and it works with like loyalty cards, it works with uh, with credit cards, with everything. Instead, now you just have one card. And what's also neat is that if they ever get separated from your phone, so that would only probably happen is like if you left your wallet somewhere, um, it your phone beeps at you unless you know that uh, um, your your credit card is away from you. So I'm excited. So that about you can like this, go back actually. and go find it. I I, huh? I was thinking at first when you were describing it. Oh, this sounds kind of dumb. And then you started explaining it more, and I went, "This is actually really cool. I hate carrying around all my shit in my wallet." So, yeah, yeah. So this is like one credit card that works with all credit card machines, and it's one device that holds multiple cards. Um, I think this is pretty cool, and I think this is kind of a good pathway into the kind of the future of having like, uh, you know, better, better buying experiences. I don't know. I mean, is, is this something that you think is worth fifty bucks? Yeah. I think so for, you know, uh, I think for a lot of people it is because, man, I'll tell you what, a wallet does some work on your back if you're sitting in a chair or oh yeah or on the yeah. bus or in a car. Ugh, this is terrible. So, I mean, the less stuff I can carry in my pocket, the better it is. I, I don't know. I think it would be yeah. worth it in time alone to me over, you know, its lifetime. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like, you know, there I, I use some apps on my phone that's like, oh, you know, for like my office max frequent buyer card and stuff and it's always kind of a pain that i have to like open up the app i have to like scroll through a big list you know select it and stuff and now it's just one card yeah and there's a little screen on the card and you just press a button and you cycle through uh right there so it's like all your cards are all in one spot i like it i'm thinking about getting one and um it's a part of kickstarter and uh i or a part of one of like those crowdfunding sites and um, I've never done one of these crowdfunding things before. Have you ever? Have you ever bought anything from one of those sites? I have not. Well, I mean, I I've given, I think, what was it? The lowest level because I didn't have very much money. To um, you are not the hero is what the name of the game is. Uh, but I only gave like five bucks or something, five or ten bucks. Um, so no, I haven't really bought anything. 
Yeah, well, um, I think I think it's interesting that uh, you know I think these crowdfunding sites it's like it's a great way for these places that I think that have good ideas in order to like get the money to make these realities happen. You know, so well that was what was cool about his. He originally only put it up there with like a twelve thousand dollar no a ten thousand dollar like limit, and he had to keep adding on. So now he's at like eighty five thousand dollars or something to make his game. Like, he just keeps adding new levels and stuff. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's what's great is that, like, once they start getting more money, they can start having these stretch goals. And, um, this, this little card, uh, device, it's called the coin, um, uh, they wanted, I think, $50,000, and, you know, and they set the goal for, like, a month. They ended up getting it within 40 minutes. Yeah. Well, like I said, I think a lot of people would want this. Like, I... Every guy wants this. I mean, we don't yeah. carry around a purse. Well, I mean, sometimes you do, John, but other than that. <laughs> <laughs> it is a merce for your information. No. <laughs> I know, you get so much shit for it. It's just funny. I don't know how often you carry it anymore. Whatever, I rock it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a lot of guys, they hate having to sit on something. This is why I wear my wallet in the front pocket, but, I mean, if I could get it thinner, that would be fine with me. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, now you can replace all your cards, you know, everything from, like, your medical cards to, to whatever. I mean, it, it just mimics the exact thing. So, it's got the barcode stripe and everything. So, so my um, one question about it is, is that, say someone steals that thing, like, how easy is it to shut off? Yeah, so, um, it requires the app in order to run. So, you have to have your smartphone on, okay. I believe. But, an uh, interesting question that is kind of in the gray area in terms of how they answered this is, um, this sounds like it would make it really easy for scammers to steal credit cards. I mean, just imagine that you're working at a restaurant and you have one of these $50 devices and, you know, you take a customer's card and now you have all their information on your card. Yeah. You know, and it's working well, that's exactly the big the thing. Way. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. It's Security is always an issue. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, I think there needs to be some good type of pairing there. Like, you know, the phone is has to be... In, so it uses Bluetooth, Bluetooth 4.0, which is, uh, like, low power, so it doesn't drain your battery very much. And, um, like, the phone and the wallet have to be paired together. I think that's probably the way that they're going to work it. So that way, like, in case anybody, you know, gets your credit card, they can't use it because they don't have your phone as yeah, well. Yeah, but how does... Uh, so, um, so they have your credit card number and all that info. What stops them from using it online? You know what I mean? Because all you do is punch in information online. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, it's 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 things that we've been working out for since the plastic age occurred, right? Is like how to stop people <laughs> from stealing your shit. So I don't know. It's hard to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just I eagerly await the day when I can just use my phone for everything. Like I hate having to carry around a wallet, and I already try to get it as thin as possible and only do the bare minimum but like it's still really annoying you know that we have to carry around something plastic that can get stolen you know and then other people can use it like yeah it's it's gonna be hard soon enough you're just gonna have like a chip embedded in your wrist or something oh i, I i'm ready for it man and then, and then you know on. what's gonna happen you know what's gonna happen then <laughs> somebody's gonna cut your hand off to swipe it <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you know um like the new iphones and and i mean other other phones have had this for a number of years too they have a like a, a fingerprint scanner you know and so people are like oh it's supposed to be an added level of security there but the thing is that like somebody's still going to steal your phone you know like that that'll still happen now you'll just prevent somebody from getting getting in it but like your phones still get jacked, you know? Like, how do you prevent that from happening? But that doesn't even work. Still suck. If, if you saw Mythbusters, all they did was take a, a dusting of Grant's fingerprint, put it, it printed it out on a piece of paper, put it on a screen, and the thing let him in. It didn't even, like... It, it just... It, it seems less secure than a, than a password to me. For a phone, anyway. Yeah. For a desktop computer, yeah. obviously a thumbprint scanner is going to be way better because... Nobody's really coming into your house and messing with it, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, in the in the realm of security and stuff, I actually bought a 
a dashboard camera for my car. <laughs> oh yeah. Because um <laughs> you know, you you hear about all this stuff like in Russia, it's like super common. Like everyone has one in Russia, a dashboard camera in their car. And um uh, I think it's also popular in China and it's due to like a lot of insurance fraud that happens. Yeah. And uh for me I was like, oh, you know what? It's really cheap and hey, you might record something kind of interesting. It's always recording. Yeah. Um but is it uh, always recording or scenario, only when you know, motion happens? Uh, sorry, it records whenever it detects sound or whenever it detects motion or whenever you start the car. Oh, okay. So it automatically turns off, but if somebody tries breaking into your car, it'll turn on. Um, if somebody walks in front of the camera, it'll turn on. Um, so uh, in that case, I mean, it's, I mean, the thing was like totally uh like in chinese like i didn't know how to work like the menus or anything like it was like a really like, crappy gadget you know shipped over from china but um it actually works out really well and you know i feel like it's kind of got like that peace of mind like kind of like that extra security you know there um layer of protection and like in a best case scenario you know like if somebody ever does like a hit and run or something you know like i have it on camera so yeah that's pretty cool <laughs> it would have been funny to have one of those in the car when gus t-bone that uh, security car Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. When I was in that, t- oh, that was bad. Yeah, but um, well, you know, it makes me wonder. Like, like you have GoPro cameras, right? And I mean, you you love to like record your you know extreme sports and stuff that you do. Like, um, I mean, do you feel like having cameras kind of everywhere is kind of like that future of it? Of, uh, it already is, really. To be honest, I mean, there's almost nowhere that something funny or stupid or terrible hasn't been recorded you know what i mean like everybody's got their (laughs) cell phones everybody's got gopro everybody's got you know a camera it does or there's security cameras you know what i mean so there's just a constant uh video presence already i mean it can only get worse every little thing you do is (laughs) every stupid thing you do is about to be uh, on videotape I feel like cars are, like, one of the only places that doesn't have cameras running everywhere. And I'm wondering, you know, why are the cameras not built into cars? I'm wondering if it's due to, like, privacy concerns or something. Oh, it's definitely privacy concerns. I would I would definitely go with that one. But it's cheap technology. I mean, it's super cheap to add one. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. But I, I, I think people would be wary of it. You know, they'd rather install it themselves than have, like, you know, the company put them in. Because who knows, you know, what they're watching, you know? Conspiracy theorists are going to go crazy with it, so. Yeah, you know, it's so dumb. It's like GPS receivers. Like, they don't transmit your location, but people still worried about that stuff when they came out. Oh, I know. Well, I think still people worry about that stuff. Like, crazy people worry about their GPS, you know, <laughs> tracking them. It's like, dude, the government has so many ways to track you, it doesn't matter. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're not tracking you by the GPS on your car. Exactly. Tracking you by, like, the multitude of other ways. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, they don't have satellites or drones or freaking everything else. Yeah. It's yeah. ridiculous. Well, um, we're about to wrap up this episode, but next week is huge. Next week, Xbox One comes out. Oh, man, I'm so excited. Uh, I can't wait to get my hands on it, actually, because I'm just excited overall. I, I've wanted to see next-gen graphics since... I heard about the new Unreal Engine, and I'm just jazzed. Oh, man. man. Uh, it's going to be awesome. It's a good time to be a gamer. <laughs> love the, I love the new console launch. It's so much fun. Oh, I know. Well, this will be like the second, I guess, modern console launch that I've been through, so I'm excited for it, man. All right, man. Well, we'll have to do a preview of the new Xbox One as well. I know. I, wa- I want to so. do an unboxing. That's what I want to do. So we'll see if we can get that put together. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Josh. Well, this is uh, Bendito John. And no name, Josh. Signing off. See you later. Meow. Yeah.